Okay, so uh, last talk. <laughs> um, we did something very similar, different data. So here we are using uh, call data records uh, and uh, social media data instead of using uh, traffic data and social media data. But the spirit is very similar. I'm very surprised because we never talked. I mean, we talked five years ago, probably, right? The last time. <laughs> and uh, that's interesting. So. I think we spoke in 2012. In 2012? OK. Sorry, 13. 13? Yeah. Actually, OK. So. Um, a bit of introduction, but I will be fast because we said it so many times. So the point is, uh, all of us are probably convinced that uh, we are able to take a picture of reality, and this picture is quite sharp nowadays. Uh, and that's because uh, there is an amount of data, OpenStreetMap you were naming, DBpedia and many others, that are sort of giving us the background knowledge. Okay, so the point of interest, the streets, things like that. But uh, not only that, uh, there are also these flows that uh, come from different sensors that are deployed around, so the utility, the way, the transportations, uh, those are uh, one source of streams. The adoption of smartphones, so you know where people are because they have a smartphone in the pocket, and uh, maybe they also use NFC, Wi-Fi. And then you have location-based uh, uh, social media, yeah. and, and they are another great source of information that uh, you can use. But not only you have sharp pictures, okay, Th that is a good news, okay, the picture is really looking like reality, but uh, the way you are tracking uh, reality is really becoming uh, incredibly fast. Uh? So what's going on is that if back uh, hundreds of year you were able to capture in months, uh, something like the census data, okay, that was possible 2,000 years ago, basically. Okay. Nowadays, you can think that uh, social media can give you, in seconds, things that happened a few seconds ago. Uh, and when you go into IoT, where you have uh, somehow milliseconds for things that happened milliseconds ago. Uh, so that means that you can build a picture of reality, and this picture is really telling you a lot about what's going on. Uh. But yes, when the, you have a big data problem, so you have this uh, poor guy here that he has to decide something, shall I do A or B, and uh, why do I not do C, and while he's thinking, the data simply pile up, right? Because uh, he's not really processing them. And so what we did when we started this project was, uh, what we need to do is, uh, is went, <laughs> but he was doing this filtering, right, uh, image. And we have to funnel them and to make sense by fusing them and by uh, creating actionable information out of it. Huh? So th that is the kind of idea. So we want uh, the, the measure to say, yes, I have to, to, to do E. So what's the concrete research question that we pose when we did the research? We ask ourselves, can we collect, analyze, repurpose, because the data were not created at all for what we want to do? social media on one side and call data records on the other side in order to have somebody perceive patterns and then be able to track the dynamics of these patterns. If I have to say the truth is a bit more complex, it looks like this. So can we collect, analyze and repurpose social media that we capture at place and uh, at events? So we are not really looking to whatever social media. We are looking to data originating caused by events in the city, more or less what you did, and uh, that are geolocated. And the other thing is we cannot access cold data records, okay, because that will violate privacy. So actually what we do, we do aggregations and we make sure that these aggregates are privacy preserving. Okay? And the other thing is I'm not happy if I give you numbers. I want to give you visualizations. And I want to make sure that even the men in the street can understand the patterns and can capture the dynamics. Okay, so that is the full research question. So should data media capture at a place during an event, privacy preserving aggregates, and visualization that allow to capture patterns visually and follow the dynamics. We set up experiments in this way. So we took Milano as an experimental setting, and we actually said, we want to build models, as you did, 
using large amount of data, years of data, but then we want to apply them only during special events. And we were concentrating ourselves on the Milano Design Week, which is a week in April where half a million people come to Milano and from all over the world. So they really changed the city during that week. And uh, we, we got two experimental subjects for the visualization. People that are sort of experts, so they are the managers of this event, and standard people, so people that were around the Milano Design Week. So to give you a bit more details, so there, there is a map of Milano behind here that you don't see. The dots here are district of Milano. So basically, there are something like uh, one to two thousand events that are hosted by something like 500 locations that are spread all across the city. Uh, and different districts host uh, different uh, groups of this. And so basically there are areas of Milano where the concentration of these uh, places are much higher. Uh, and that is Brera and Tortona, mostly. Then the ingredients are those that you have seen during the, the days that you, we have been talking. So we have big data, volume and velocity. We have semantic technology to deal with variety. And basically, the entire system is built on sort of ontology-based data access that we, we do on, on top of the aggregates. And we also do name identity recognition and uh, linking. Then we, we need also a bit of data science, as you, you, tell, you told us. Yeah? So you need to do build statistical models, and you need uh, to detect anomalies. And that is uh, where data science come in. And the last ingredient is visual analytics. Mm? So we want known experts to be able to read the data and tell stories using this data. The first thing that we did was in 2013. And uh, basically, we collected uh, a huge amount of data from um, uh, Milano for a year. And then we focused on the design week. And we created these kind of dashboards. And we pushed them to the design week uh, event organizers. And we asked them, do you recognize anything that makes sense? And the year after, we did this. This was an installation in a public space. So there was uh, this uh, something like six meter long uh, black wall with two large videos. And we were projecting movies on it that were fully built on the kind of analysis that I will show you. Eh? And this is where we somehow did the experiment with the standard people. Okay, so those that came there and looked at it, and we were asking them whether we could ask later on uh, to evaluate this kind of visualization. So what's um, behind it? I said that uh, there is semantic technologies. So one thing that we did, we built uh, an ontology that uh, we call Frappe, uh, which is uh, basically a vocabulary to describe type variant and geospatial related data. Mm? And the abstraction are the following. So here you have reality. And uh, we have a grid with cells or pixels. The grid somehow is used to project an image of uh, reality, an aggregated image of reality over a film, and then the film goes on, right? So you, you take a picture now, then it moves on, you take another picture, right? So the, the, the abstraction are the abstraction of the frame eh, of the movie, the abstraction of the pixel, the abstraction of the event, and the abstraction of the place. That's frappe, OK? And this is the ontology, but I, I don't want to go too much into the details. So basically, all the visualization comes to you through this ontology. Huh? All the data are homogenized and casted into visualization thanks to this. But what we want to do, right, is to, to create visualizations. So let's start to see this visualization and try to understand what you need to do. What you're looking at is a map of Milano. So these are the main streets of Milano. The squares here are larger if there is more volume, of course. Mm? And uh, you will see later on that I, I will do more, more stuff about it. Eh? But, but basically what we did, as you saw in the previous slide, uh, we cut Milano in squares. Okay? So we did the tessellation of Milano. Then we took the mobile phone data that comes uh, geolocalized. And we compute uh, how many calls uh, are within one of these squares every 15 minutes. Mm? So what you're looking at now is the volume of phone calls. Mm? Does it make some sense 
well, the, the usual one. From the city center, you have more phone calls than from outside. Not that, new, not that meaningful. So what you want to actually get is this, right? So you don't want the current volumes. You want to know what's the difference between the current volume and some predictive model that tells you the normal. Hmm? Because that will allow you to see that here there is much more phone calls than usual. Here there is much more phone calls than usual. Okay? So th that is something that you want to do, right? You don't want to capture the volume. You want to capture the difference between the volume and the standard behavior. And that's what you do with uh, a bit of data science. Eh? Then I, I elaborate on the details. Second thing, you want to make sense of them. So what's that stuff there? Okay? And so you go down to OpenStreetMap and you check uh, which is the district of Milano that better fits uh, that uh, area that you can depict using this anomaly, and that is the Brera district. Eh? And you go again and you do it, and that is Tortona district. And you go again and you say, oh, what is this? It does not correspond to any specific district of Milano. Then, this is not enough to tell why, right? So now I know that there is more phone calls, but why is going on? So maybe, as you were seeing, social media can tell. So that's the hypothesis. Do social media tell a complementary story to the one that I have from the telco data? And so if I go there and I fetch the most frequently used hashtags, it, it comes out that here I have Milano, Forest Salone, Forest Salone 2013, Brera, blah, blah, blah. And here I have Amici, Emma, Tortona, Design. Uh, and the larger, the, the more they are, okay, standard uh, tag clouds. Now, if you are in Italian, okay, you're not, you will know that Fori Salone is the way we call the Milano Design Week uh, in Italy, okay? So, okay, that makes sense. But Emma e Amici, okay, if you are Italian, you know that it's a very popular TV show. Uh, Emma used to be the most popular uh, person in this popular TV show at that time, okay? So, shall you get that Emma was there? Again, I don't think that's the point. What you have to do, you have to build a model of how the hashtags are used, and then you have to take away the standard use of hashtags, because otherwise you will be polluted, right, by whatever the hashtag is. And if you do that, actually you end up with this. You end up with here more or less the same, but here Emma and Amici disappear. The reason is that this was a Sunday, and every Sunday in that period of the year, there is Amici, okay? And in that specific moment, Emma was very trendy, okay? So you have to take that off, otherwise you will conclude something completely wrong, right? Okay, so how did we build this? We built it like this. First of all, we went out and we looked for data sources, okay? So I want to do this project. I was granted uh, from IBM some, some money to do it. So I started looking around for people that can give me data. And I found Telecom Italia, and I found the usual social media that I was able to access before. And uh, I went to the people that run the Milano Design Week website, okay? So I, I gave her the data. That is the collection step, very manual, okay? Then what I did was uh, I used this Frappe model to somehow cast all the data in one single abstraction, eh? because that was the most important thing for the kind of visualization that you saw. Mm? So somehow here we capture data stream and we cast them uh, in Frappe, and here we capture static data source and we cast them in Frappe. Then we have uh, a machinery that does the analysis, okay, basically does all the counting. Okay, so how many hashtags are present in that square, in that time slot? How many phone calls come from that state? It, it's really a, an amount of aggregation, uh, nothing more than that. But then comes uh, what uh, you were talking about. We need to build models, okay? So you need to, to keep this machine running for a year, and through that year, you, you collect enough information to build a model. And that model will be quite expensive to build, of course. But when it's done, then at runtime, uh, you get the data, and you can do the anomaly detection in a pretty fast way. Uh, because the com computing the anomaly is just comparing current data against the model, mm, and nothing else. And so more or less, this that you see is the architecture of the system. Uh, so it does collection down there, and use semantics to represent data in an homogeneous way. Then it does a, a lot of big data stuff. So this is implemented over uh, but you will see later, but it's implementing in pig over Hadoop mostly uh, for the 
um, for the phone calls and we use Sparkle for the social media data. Eh? The, uh, all the anomaly detection is completely built on Hadoop and Pig again. And then this data store is simply a standard database because once you have abstracted that level, you can fit data into a standard database and visualization or HTML5 stuff. Okay, so giving detail on that side. So we divided Milano in 100 by 100 cells, and this was a difficult choice to do. Okay, so shall I cut it in 100 by 100, in 10 by 10, in 1,000 by 1,000. Yeah? And here the decision was very simple. We, we want uh, the cell in the city center, the pixel in the city center, to be similar in size to the mobile phone cell. Hmm? Whereas when you go outside, uh, where our interest was much less, uh, there you can have uh, a cell phone that maps over two, three, four pixel, okay? So basically, we want the image to be perfect, okay, when we are inside the city. And when we go outside the city, we know that uh, the, the picture will be a, a bit meaningless, okay, because we are oversampling the data. And we have uh, an antenna that covers uh, two square kilometers, and then we are saying that we have pixel inside, but you cannot say the amount uh, of phone call from them, right? because you are oversampling uh, the, the specific data area. Okay, so that ends up with uh, um, 10,000 cells, okay? But then what you have to do is uh, to capture them. This one will like, give you the event information. Call only tells you volume. So call volume is only, you know, uh, amount of, uh, I think, in the probably number of people there or... Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's not. It's a proxy for the number of people, yes. Yeah. The event is uh, every 15 minutes, we count it. But how, I mean, what, what kind of data is this? Is that this is event, uh, there's, a, there's a dance, or there's a you know, uh, demonstration of something? Ah, yes, I get to that one. The event are, um, sh are, are things like this one. <laughs> so an event can be me going there and putting this up. Okay, so this is the kind of events. The events are very long lasting, eh? so they may last two days. Mm? So they are sort of. Uh, is, there, is there a predefined vocabulary? That yes. Uh, okay. Yes, so all the events. In the prepay, you mentioned the limited. The yeah. There is uh, this Milano da Design Week database. Okay. It's a website, you can look it up, okay? And basically it contains all the 1,050 events. Okay, we know them since the beginning. So these are planned. It's a plan, right. Then you see what is the user engagement. Exactly, that's, that's what, you, what you will see in the end, yes. Okay. That, that makes a big difference. Oh, yes, of course. The problem definition. Ab ab absolutely. So this was, uh, is it possible, given that you have a ground truth, to measure it? Okay, and uh, what you did is unplan event, yes. okay? No, I use, I mean, I didn't, Are you similar? Like I have around 850 traffic events types. Mm -hmm. so you test it, but once you, you 3D fix it, you also have a new event. Once you're done, you're done the model. Yeah, yeah, there is yeah. no such thing. Okay, look at this. Yeah. yeah, but I agree with him. I mean, this is monitoring, basically. Yeah. And it's monitoring something that is going on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we were capturing uh, this uh, counting every 15 minutes, okay? So if you do a, a small computation, you, you understand that there were 5.76 million pixels in this week, okay? It's just uh, 10,000 cells every 15 minutes. It means uh, a given number per day, then you have the seven days, and that is the number that you get as an answer. Okay, now, most important is uh, you have to build these models, right? So you have to take this quarter of hour pixel per pixel, and then you have to come up with a model that says, if it is Monday, and uh, it is between uh, 7 and 7.15, I should expect for this pixel this amount of calls. And if it is uh, 7.15 to 7, it will be a different one. Right? So we build basically a, a model for every 15 minutes and every pixel in, uh, in the 
in the diagram, right? So it is working days, weekdays, that is the most uh, gross grain, and then every 15 minutes inside. Um, you should not be happy to build them, but you should test them, right? So you should go and check whether you did something right. So are they Bell or Gaussian models? Because if they are, then your anomaly detection will be meaningful. But if they are not, then they will make no sense, right? And so what you can do is, for instance, you can test them with an anderson darling test. And what you see is that uh, green dots are pixels in which uh, um, the, um, the test is correct, like this, right? And uh, the other ones that uh, are not uh, plotted, okay, are pixels where the test is not successful. Okay, so what you see is that this is not a bell curve. Okay, this is probably something that you can transform in a bell curve with some transformation, but in that moment it is not. Okay, so what we were happy about is that in the city center where most of the events were going on, they were Gaussian. Okay, but that also tells you that you should not use what we did uh, to do any anomaly detection outside. Eh? Because basically outside, none of the models that we built make sense. Hmm? They are, they are mod Gaussian model of something which is not a Gaussian process at all. Um, so yes, this is just to, to remember you are out, you come up with uh, uh, something which is not uh, uh, part of a Gaussian. Eh? So the idea is that you compute outliers, and outliers are points that are very far away from uh, your average. Eh? Normally, you say two times uh, after the standard deviation. And eh? that is the standard way of doing it. In our experiment, we actually did uh, one time after the standard deviation, eh? because that was m much better in terms of what we did after. Mm? But uh, in order to compute them, yeah, it, it takes something like uh, uh, 20 minutes over uh, an AC2 uh, cluster with seven machines. Uh, so it's really something cheap uh, if you compare it to this. Uh, so if you take uh, the months of data that we did, uh, to build the models it takes uh, a day. Mm? So it's very similar to, to what you were telling, right? So building the model is expensive and it takes time, so you should not do it too often. But actually using the model at runtime, it's very cheap, okay? Then, um, yes, this is the way we, we build it, and then we check whether this makes any sense. Okay, so we went down to our ground truth, which is uh, the red pixel here. So the red pixel here are pixel of Milano in which there are places that host event of Milano Design Week. Okay, and what we did was uh, to check whether we were able to find them using the anomaly. Mm? So I'm saying that uh, uh, somehow I'm OK, so I'm, I'm happy, so I have a precise answer if an anomalous pixel is within uh, the Brera districts or the Tortona pi pixel or the Milano pixel that are red. Okay? And I will not be happy if they're outside. Mm? So these are the results. So if you look at precision, it basically pulls, but it's very high. Mm? So only during night uh, you get problem in, uh, in using this uh, as a way to say there is an event uh, of Milano Design Week. But that's normal, okay? In a given moment they stop phoning, and so it's not that easy to use uh, um, the mobile phone. Huh? So precision is very high. Recall is not that high. Hmm? So at uh, city scale it never goes much up above 0 0.4. And so it means that uh, okay, when there is an anomaly, is normally within uh, a, a pixel where there is one of these events of Milano Design Week. But if you look at these maps, normally you don't have all the pixels highlighted. Eh? So only a subset of them are highlighted. But when you go within the districts, then you can see that they go up to 1. Eh? So there are moments of the day where actually the full district is anomalous. Okay, and that is what you want to, to check, right? So it's true that during Milano Design Week, half a million people come. These half a million are a substantial amount of people, and they change the way people phone. Eh? Th that is the, the idea. But uh, can't, can't you input the recall using the Twitter data? Yes, I, I'm coming to that. So this is purely phone data, okay? okay. Mm? So 
putting them all together, eh, high precision, low recall at city scale, and high recall at district scale. Eh? That is what the phone data give you. Now, you have seen this before, so I will be very quick. Eh? So this is our infrastructure. So the C-Sparkle engine is actually here. Okay, and the rest is uh, the, the thing that I, I, I did not present to you, but we have uh, all the adapter to send things in. We have technology to, to have uh, the stream buses, and then we have the publisher and the visualizations, okay? Um, this is already seen so many times, right? So that's a, a tweet happening into a bottle of Heineken beer, Heineken Design Week at uh, Heineken Design Magazzini. And you expect to have some knowledge base. In this case, is this database from Milano Design Week. Okay, and you expect there to have an event, Anakin Design Week, and you map it to that hashtag. You expect to have uh, some related place, uh, the magazzini, so you can explain that the magazzini based on the fact that there is a syntactic match, but there is also a semantic connection. And then you can derive extra knowledge because you know it, right? So the magazzini, Anakin Design Week is Milano Design Week, just because it is in the database. And happily, a bit of uh, sentiment mining just to, to, to find also that one. So what we did was, we did that, that thing for the tweets of Milano for an entire year, and we basically collected all the statistics of all the hashtags, okay? And then we went uh, trying to come up with a, a model that can fit them, okay? So we asked ourselves, is there any model that we can use to predict the user of an hashtag? And we find out that for some of these hashtags, the very popular one, okay, we could use uh, this uh, old winter method. Uh, it's a standard uh, time series analytics method that allow you basically to capture stagionality and capture trends. Uh, that is more or less what this stuff does. So that if that is the number of uh, usage of that uh, hashtag across the, the day, you should think that uh, you fit it to a model, and then the model will do a prediction for you, okay? How does that work? Okay, th that is very quick, by the way. Huh? So it's uh, something that uh, is very simple to do. You can do it online because winter holds can be done incrementally. So it's something very cheap. But th the nice thing is that it predicts nicely what you want. Huh? So if uh, you look at this, what we did was cutting the week in work day and weekend days and cutting the day in uh, temporal slices. And that, and that is the number of times uh, the hashtag uh, Milan is used, okay? Now you learn the model and then uh, you use it to do anomaly detection. And what happens is that uh, normally the anomaly are quite small, but in this specific moment, uh, they are very high. And they are perfectly correlated to the user of something else. In this case, is the Milano Design Week hashtag. Okay, so what you know is that something is going on in Milano because there are a number of tweets that are saying Milano Design Week. They do not put Milan, okay? So this is purely something that you get out of a comparison of a prediction over time. Yeah? So that is can be a way to detect things uh, even if you don't know them, huh? if you want to exit this uh, scenario where you know exactly what's going on. And um, so these are a bit of numbers. As you can see, this is a very low volume signal. Huh? So we were able, in the end, uh, to capture something like uh, 3,000 tweets uh, that were perfectly linked to the event, but only some hundreds were naming uh, a specific event. Okay. And so what we did was trying to check with the same method that I was illustrating before, hmm, whether they tell you a story. Hmm? So, as you can see, the precision is incredibly high. Huh? So wh when people tweet about Milano Design Week, they do it within the pixel where there is an event. And that is the, the story that uh, this data tells. But the recall is terrible, <laughs> right? So if you look at one of these maps, only few of these pixels are highlighted. Huh? Because only the very popular venue are so important that somebody will tweet about them. Hmm? Most of the venue will simply be not interesting enough, so people will not talk about them. Eh? <coughs> so, lesson learned, very high precision, and the recall is somehow acceptable only for the districts, so you should not use it for the full Milano. But now the point is, 
do they tell a complementary story? Do they tell the same story? Do they tell a completely different story? Uh, th that is what uh, you want to ask, okay? So if these are the pixels highlighted by the mobile phone and these are the pixels highlighted by the social, then somehow I'm not happy, right? Because there, there are two phenomena. One is clearly a massive phenomena because I can see from phone calls, so something pervasive, that there is more people, but then there is no tweet from them, okay? So I cannot explain what's going on based on tweets. Hmm? On the opposite, down here, uh, if it is a, a sub part of it, or if it is even better, the full part, then I'm happy, right? Because that means that I can explain why there is an anomaly in the phone call based on the tweets. And what we did was we used Jacquard similarity, which is a very simple technique. It, it basically tells you how big is the intersection based on uh, the sides uh, of the of of union. And what you can see here is that if you now plot uh, um, the Jacquard, it basically follows the recall of a social activity. Mm? So what it means is that if there is a pixel, and uh, the pixel is uh, active, is always inside uh, one of the pixels of uh, the mobile um, anomaly. Huh? So it's uh, this situation, huh? basically. Huh? So yes, it's true, if we do this experiment uh, during Milano Design Week, and we isolate the tweets that talk about Milano Design Week, they perfectly explain uh, the anomaly in the phone calls huh? within the districts. Okay. so. What comes after, right? I said uh, we, we want not to do this because this is completely useless for our customers. Okay, we want to do something else. So what we did was working with people from the design uh, um, de uh, department of Politecnico, and we asked them how would you visualize this bad thing that numerically we have behind. Okay. And so we started thinking about it, and that is the proposal that they did. So I'm, I'm really proud to present it, but it's not my stuff. Eh? So what you see here is, OK, some information about the, the context, because that otherwise will not give much sense. Then there are these uh, streets, uh, right? And these streets, you can see them if the pixel is anomalous, and you cannot see them if the pixel is standard, OK? And then there are these green dots. The green dots are larger. So the green dots are there if there, if there are tweets. And they are larger the more tweets there are. And they are more long lasting the more the signal stay stable. Okay? So if there is somebody doing 10 tweets, uh, followed by somebody doing 10 tweets, uh, this, it will pop up and stay up. Okay? Uh, and then we also plot the venues, uh, just to, to, to give a bit of hint uh, and these triangular venues. But uh, that didn't work out as nicely as I, I wanted. Then there is a list of uh, named venues in Twitter, just to, to also explain that. And this is the result. I don't want to show you this. I want to show you the one that we did this year because it's even more fancy. So, so this is Milano. I hope you can see it. Yeah. Okay. Ah, maybe we can do this. Can you? Doesn't work? Uh, this is okay, doesn't matter. So this is uh, Milano, the 12th of September, and uh, there was the Fashion Week, OK? And so what you see is uh, basically the, 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 the pushing up all these events that were going to be prepared. And the green dots are again the, the tweets. And that corner up here, this is the Milano Universal Exposition, OK? And um, if I do this, OK, y you can see the pulse, right? I hope that you can see it. <laughs> OK, so 
this is more or less what, uh, what you can do with this data. And this year, given that we were successful, we convinced uh, the people of Expo to have them on screen which are extremely large, something like 12 meters by 3 meters. So if you go to Expo, you, you can see us. Uh, does, does this help an individual make any decision or any information? No, this is pu I, 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 it's purely wow show. Nothing else, okay? But you can build services on it. Mm? So the agreement that we had with Telecom Italia was that we want to create wow effect, because that matters in this moment, but then you can think about security services, uh, uh, um, safety services, uh, even more down-to-earth services for the Fashion Week, for the Milano Design Week, uh, so popularity measurement and things like that. And so, planning of uh, the public transports based on these. Huh? Indirectly, indirectly you are advertising for better popular ones, right? Say again? But indirectly you are actually advertising for popular ones. Oh, yeah. People who see this row, oh, there are a lot of people here, probably I'll go there. Or avoid it. Or yeah. Avoid it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you, you got it. That was something that we were doing for Expo, which is uh, a bit different visualization, is this. Y you see? So the green dots here are geolocated tweets, whereas the popping of uh, squares, those are the pavilions, okay? And these are Instagrams uh, about the pavilions. And so this helps you knowing where the people are tweeting from, where the Instagram are coming from, and maybe it can help you to take decision. Uh? So that's something else that uh, is going on in these movies that uh, we are doing. So as soon as you know where the crowd is, you can actually <laughs> yeah, that was our dream. Then we learned that there are eight hours of queue to go into one pavilion, so that screw up the entire thing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Here the, the queue are between two hours uh, when you're lucky and up to eight hours for the very famous pavilion. Yeah, and in the, in the newspaper, the, the Jap <laughs> Japanese pavilion. pavilion. Like, uh, they put an, uh, 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 an alert, an alert on the, for, uh, the, in the morning it was like, one hour queue, and they keep updating it. And it was like, in the evening it was six hour, and it was on the newspaper. <laughs> no, we had, I'm done. Yeah. I just want to convince you that you can do the last mile, so visual analytics, and then I'm done. So, um, what is visual analytics about? Eh? It's about guessability, basically. Okay, so you do something, and uh, you don't provide any explanation, but still what you do must make sense. So what's that? Dinosaurs. Dinosaur extinction, right? Okay. This, is, this, is this is much harder. It's a popular book. Uh, Shining. Shining. <laughs> no, but it's not good that you did it. You never saw it before, okay? But do you see shine, Shining? Yeah, it's shining, right? Is the, 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 the ace is a clearly shining. The typewriter is, uh, uh, is him. Is him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the point was, what we were asking these people from the design lab was, uh, can you come up with abstractions that will make sense to the people that saw them, even if we don't provide explanations? Uh, so that was the idea. And so they came up with this uh, kind of interface that you saw. And we did the evaluation on something different from the movie. So we did actually provide uh, this picture and we asked to people, to, to tell us what they read, okay? So they could read uh, correlation. If uh, the map is visible and there is a green dot inside, they can read partial correlation and they can read no correlation. Uh, that is what we ask for. These are the kind of questions that we ask. Uh, and as you can see, basically this tells that this kind of visualization somehow tells you more or less what you want. So when there is a clear correlation, people see it. When there is no clear correlation, somehow people see it. And when it's confused, people is confused. Okay? So s somehow we were satisfied with this. Okay? I'm, I'm not saying that uh, I'm convinced because <laughs> still when I look at this, they, to me they look like a mess. Yeah? But uh, I mean, l luckily enough, <laughs> most of the people that we interview actually grasp it. So I don't know what's your feeling. Do they make some sense? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I will report it. <laughs> so, that was my, my research question. I hope that I convince you that it's a yes, the answer, right? At least uh, for Milano Design Week, uh, 
those two years, okay? And I can add to that probably the expo where, where we did it more broadly. And so the take home message is, you read it. Come on, you can read it. Uh, <laughs> social network can tell you where. Phone call, oh, it's not. Mm -hmm. location based What's up? Okay, location from social media and phone calls. Yes. Can be integrated with uh, open data or understood with data science. Uh huh, and, and big data open technology. Open data, open, open data, you can apply data science. Okay. Again, integration. That was visualization. Okay. Maybe you forgot so it. So, what? <laughs> Ideas. <laughs> <Besides>. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so that, uh, that's the take home message. And uh, maybe l let me thank the people that did it. Yeah, just one more second. So it's not me only, it's uh, an amount of people from my lab, an amount of people from the design lab, an amount of people from Telecom Italia, and we were funded by this 80 Digital, which is a funding agency in Europe. Okay. <laughs> so. I hope we su you survived. Yeah, let's open, yeah, uh, let's open <laughs> the lights, and I think uh, that's uh, the end of our.